family of CGPC and dear friends. Thank you for tuning in. A blessed and happy Father's Day to all the dads, granddads, and great granddads as we celebrate this Sunday. Not all of us are fathers or parents, but all of us are children. We are sons or daughters of our beloved father and mother, without whom we would not be born. And we are also sons and daughters of our awesome Father in Heaven, the Almighty God who has created all of us, both the dads, mums, and the children. I would like to welcome you all to our online celebration via YouTube this Sunday, where we honour, praise, and worship our Abba Father, the Creator God, and my preaching on honouring our parents. Looking forward to having you all. Thank you and Shalom. extended for another two weeks but in CGBC our prayer and praise night will not be stopping we will continue to gather together as one body as one people as one family in Christ to encourage and to spur on and to pray for one another and to praise and glorify our Lord Almighty now in prayer this is where we together as people of God and as the church, we receive our power and also we receive our growth. So come and join us on Wednesday, sign in at 8.20pm. Come and join us and Sister Jessica as we continue not to lose heart, but to stay connected to one another, to encourage and to spur one another on in this journey of life. I'll see you then. everyone welcome to Sunday service so now let's arise and worship the Lord together let's sing our first song let's clap your hands together as you sing this song to you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible to you Blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible gonna live by what I see I'm not gonna live by what I feel Deep down I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything Do you? I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who 
is finished. Nothing is impossible to you. Blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Deep down I, deep down I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do anything. To you, I can do anything. I can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you, thine eyes are open, strongholds are broken, I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Let's sing, I believe together, I believe. I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I can do anything, I can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you, blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken, I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. Sing, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe in you. Let's praise the Lord with our voices, with our applause. It's God, it's God. Nothing is impossible with our God. Amen. It's God. Now let's quiet down our hearts as we invite the Lord to our hearts as we sing of this worship song. Let's pour our hearts out to the Lord and say, God, I want more of you. I want more of you, God. When the music fades, all is stripped away. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself it's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the All 
about you. It's all about you, Jesus. When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring. Something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within to the way things appear. You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it When it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. Yes, God. It's all about you, God. It's all about you. Just want to glorify your name, God. We invite your presence into this place, God. Yes, God. I'll bring you more than a song, God. Today, God. I just want to worship you, God. I want to bring you more than a song, God. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. More than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. More than a song. You're looking into, you're looking into my heart, you're looking into my heart, into my heart, you're looking into my heart, you're looking into my heart, into my heart. It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it, and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the say, things say, I'm sorry, Lord. Let's repent before the Lord. Things that we've done wrong. Let's repent to the Lord. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the song to you, God. Just come into our lives, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. We want more of you, God. I know you're looking to our hearts, God. I know, God, you love us so much, God, that you even sent your son to die for us, God. 
so God, today, God, we want to pour out our hearts to worship you, oh God. Let's God, let's sing God. I'll bring you more than the song, God. Let's sing God. Let's God. We just want to bring you more than a song today, God. Yes, God, we just want to bring you more than a song today, God. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to you. God for loving us so so much God today God we just want to pour out our hearts to you God give our best to you God yes God yes God hi there dear friends welcome to Canning Garden Baptist Church this morning and thank you for tuning in to our worship service this morning I want to thank the worship team for leading us in this time of praise and worship it is particularly important especially in this highly volatile time in this precarious time that we need to fix our eyes upon the law we as a people of God we know that uh, while we are in this world whatever the world is facing at least physically we also as the church of God, as the people of God also have to walk through whatever trials and tribulations that comes our way. The key is, let us learn from the psalmist to see how, how he managed to walk through even in his time of great trial as well. So I will read from Psalm 33 on verse 20 to 22 the psalmist says our soul waits for the Lord he is our help and our shield for our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name let your steadfast love O Lord be upon us even as we hope in you so let us wait for the Lord our hope in him is not in vain for at the end of time when Jesus comes again our hope will be vindicated our faith will be proven and we will live together with Christ and reign with him in real peace and harmony without pain without sorrow that is a promise that we can hang on to in as evidence in the book of Revelation so before I pass the time to Dr. Lim uh, for the message this morning, come, let us come before him and just submit ourselves to him. Father, we want to praise you and we want to thank you for who you are, for you are great and you are good and you have called us into your kingdom. You have purchased us with the blood of your son and you have given us your Holy Spirit to help us to walk through in times of difficulty, in times of trials, and in times of great tribulation. Father, we want to ask that uh, you will help those of us who are suffering, who are in pain, who are grieving because of what this pandemic has uh, done. Lord, empower them with your presence comfort them in your peace we pray and we know that you are 
Lord, and you are God. So help us to fix our eyes upon you as we continue to walk through this world as pilgrims. So Lord, we want to submit ourselves to you and ask that you bless us and help us. And we also, Lord, I want to pray for Dr. Lim that you give him wisdom and you give him uh, words of encouragement, words in this season to encourage and edify the weak to help those who are grieving. Lord, speak through him, speak through your servants, anoint him, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I pass the time now to our preacher this morning, Dr. Lim Wee Yong. Good morning and welcome. Thank you, uh, Johannes, the worship team and the media team, and uh, Pastor Mark. And I want to thank you for gathering together in this hour of celebration. Now to all the fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers, a blessed and happy Father's Day. We want specially to praise and worship and share the joy of celebration with our Abba Father in Heaven. Let us pray. Our Father in Heaven, we rejoice and praise You because You have been and always will be such a good Father to all of us. We are so blessed and privileged to be called Your beloved, Your very own and heirs in the Kingdom. Speak now, Father. Your children are listening. Amen. Now we thank God, our Father in Heaven, who knows each of us, each of us, intricately and intimately. The Bible tells us that the exact number of hairs on our head He knows. He knows us even while we have been formed in our mother's womb. He knows what we are made of, how we are made to be, when and where and to whom we are born to and the purposeful destiny he intends for all of us. You know what this means for those of us who are parents or parents to be? That even before your little ones are formed or born, before you know of their gender, their physical appearance, and certainly their personality, our Father in heaven has already gotten all this figured out and factored in. God has gifted us the biological means to procreate and the spiritual blessing and calling as parents. They may be accidental parents, but never accidental children. So children, every one of you, are born according to God's perfect plan, fearfully and wonderfully made in His image. Amen? Now, Malachi 2.15 tells us that this one God who made both man and woman in body and spirit and by that covenantal union between them, in faithfulness, what the one God desires is godly offspring. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring, says the Lord. Godliness is living, you know, mirroring and manifesting the morality, the personality and the creativity of our Heavenly Father. God-fearing parents, God-loving children, and God-honouring families, that is what God Sick. And families make up community, a community in unity that will definitely rock the world and make a difference. And God lays down the rules and regulations and instructions and empowerment, enabling all of us for this to happen. Now, Genesis tells us when God made man and women in His image, He blessed them and He instructed them to be fruitful and multiply, to fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over all the living creatures. And God said He was very pleased, and He was very good. Not only good, but the very goodness of God for this and through the institution of family. That is what parental-child relationship features prominently in His Ten Commandments. Okay, and Satan knows that. He is out to distort, denigrate, divide, and destroy this godly institution. Now, we won't let him succeed, would we? No, we won't. 
Okay, I'm coming now to the text of my sermon today. The title I put for my sermon today is Honour Your Father and Mother, taken from Exodus 20, verse 12. Honour your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving, is giving you. The Ten Commandments tricky by God, eight out of ten are in the negative, prohibitive. That is, thou must not, thou shalt not. Only two are commanded to act upon. The first being to observe the Sabbath, a holy day dedicated to and set apart for the holy God. The next to do command is to honour your father and mother. God says you shall not, must not do all these eight things, but you are commanded to honour me, the heavenly father on Sabbath, and honour your earthly papa and mama. Okay? Honour is about the value, the intrinsic worth we place on someone. It is to esteem at the highest level and with the deepest respect. Okay? Honour is a value that would uh, captivate your heart that motivates your thought and activates your responses. It is a word of motion, of action. Okay? What you honour, you will put into practice. Okay? Honour is from God and foremost to and for God. Right? It is then learned and lived out in the family because this is where life begins. This is where you are born and nurtured to be an adult. The family nucleus would then form the community and nations where an environment of honour flourishes and manifests. Today, I want to bring to your attention, which I believe are three fundamental ways in honouring our parents. First, be thankful. Ephesians 5.20 says, Always give thanks for all things to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be thankful in all things. That's right. Give thanks for everything. Now, Paul alluded in Ephesians 5, 17 to 33, and he re-emphasized it in Colossians 3, 12 to 21. I advise you to read on your own all these verses. That a spiritual-filled life bearing the fruit of the Spirit cradles human relationships. Right? A resultant culture and atmosphere of praise and thanksgiving forms the foundation to our marital and family relations, as detailed by Paul. He says, wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives and children, obey and honour your parents. All right? Do all these in words and deeds in the family with praise and thankfulness by the Spirit. Now, children, which part of the fruit of the Spirit have you not savoured in your family? Love, kindness, joy, peace, patience, goodness, fruitfulness, faithfulness, and self-control. You know, as parents, there's one fruit which I really experience a lot is patience. In other versions, it's called forbearance, and long-suffering. Now, thank your parents. Now, thankfulness is celebrating who someone is, not who someone is not. It is an attitude, a gratitude for the blessing that are before us and hope with faith on what is to come rather than dwelling on what could have been. Thankfulness appreciates the people around us, appreciate our parents that, who are around us more than the value of materials in our life. Be thankful because God chooses your parents using their biological makeup to form you. The precise combination and permutation of DNA of your parents, God uses, result in you with a unique physical appearance, personality, strength and weaknesses. You are who you are because of your parents. Now be thankful for their provision for your physical needs. You know, the food, of course, the clothing, the transport, the housing, they're toiling for your education and tuitions. Okay? Now, I remember how my mother, she was uneducated. She only studied up to standard three. I didn't think. She finished even standard three. She's a self-taught centrist, worked so hard into the nights to supplement our family income, to provide for myself and my siblings. Now, we are thankful Yes, by remembering, recalling, recounting the goodness of our parents. Count your blessings and be grateful. Right? 
Thankfulness is also ongoing when you pay attention. Give notice to things, big and small, your parents say and do to you now. All right? Okay? Home is always a place you can always go back to. Your parents are there for comfort and security. Okay? The Chinese phrase is gan en. It's about being thankful for their gracious love for you as parents. Right? Whether biological, adopted, or spiritual children express thankfulness in words, express it in written words if you have difficulty in uttering it. That's what I did when I was in university for the first couple of years in my university education. I wrote regularly to my dad. You know, uh, yeah, he, he studied until standard six. He finished his primary school. So I wrote to him in Chinese, okay, expressing my honor and appreciation of him. All right? You can do that. And you can express it in obedience. Be obedient. Right? This is a decree by God, not only in the Old Testament, but also in the New. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on earth. Obey your parents. It's the right thing to do, says the Lord. And this pleases the Lord. Colossians 3.20 Obey God. Obey your father and mother in everything. Okay? A decree, an instruction, a command that carries a promise that you may live long and well. Not only in length, but in substance, right? So submissiveness is about following instructions. Be teachable, discipline, training, and correction. Yeah, you know, I'm sure all of you have heard that before. Parents always tell you and tell me, <laughs> you know, I eat salt more than you eat rice. You know, figuratively speaking, they really do in many occasions, okay? They have the years of life behind them which will do you good for the years ahead of you if you listen to them. Do not take that teaching or advice with a pinch of salt, right? Okay? They are not low uh, They are not antiquity. They are not of the dinosaur era. They are not old school. They are not our touch. You know what? Experience is what you learn from your own mistakes. But wisdom is a lesson that you receive from the mistake of others, including the errors made by parents in their own life. As a young child, your experience tells you that, you know, these medicines by the doctor, when you're sick and unwell, are bitter to taste, right? All of us have experienced that. This is bitter medicine. I don't like it, mom. I don't like it, dad. You know, I don't want to take them. Now, the wisdom of your parents, they take that. You take the medicine because it will make you well. It will make you comfortable, Right? Wisdom is the ability to live life skillfully. We need that wisdom. You know what? For my parents, it's free. It's a gracious gift. Let your parents impart their wisdom to you. Receive it with humility. In actual fact, you know, some bitterness in life is quite good for you, eh? if you know what I mean. Okay? All right? Now, Proverbs, the book of wisdom by King Solomon, says it all. Okay, in Proverbs 3, 12, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. All right, okay. Now, in Proverbs 6, verses, 12, uh, verses 20 to 23, it tells us very clearly, my child, keep your father's commandment and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Both your father and mother's, all right, bind them upon your heart always. Let your commandment that teaching guard your heart. Tie them around your neck. Let them guide you. Guide your direct direction of life. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, the teaching is a light. They are lamp and light onto your path. And the reproof of discipline are the way of life. Okay, take that. Take that. What about grandparents? There are many grandparents in our church. You know, I'm sure 
Yeah, you have grandparents of your own. Now, Paul tells us in 2 Timothy, in the book of 2 Timothy, in the letter to Timothy, in the second letter of his to the Timothy, says, no? Timothy's grandmother and father, Louis and Eunice, have raised him well, has taught him and prepared him from infancy that when Paul came and preached, all three of them received Christ by faith, which is evidently genuine and strong in this family. All right? Now, Timothy was assembly. Paul said he was assembly in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 Having been nourished with the truth and trained in godliness from young, from his grandmother, Louise, from his mother, Eunice. Now, do you have grandparents who have taught you well? I'm sure you have. My own grandmother, who was illiterate, taught me well. He taught me to be organized, to be independent in self-care from age six. How to, you know, carry the basin water to prepare myself for school. All right, how to wash my own shoes. How to take a bus to school. And she taught me how to use the chopsticks correctly. That skill I learned from her. And she taught me never to waste a single grain of rice on my bowl, which I still do until now. Right? And fathers, of course, you are instructed not to provoke your child, your children, and to bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Ephesians 6 4. All right? Okay? This is an enormous stewardship responsibility God has placed on fathers. And as fathers, we ought to honor that trust and privilege. Okay? Now, as children, more often than not, life lessons are caught and not just taught. Right? Now, how I observe my own father, you know, treated his workers fairly and honorably. He was not a Christian then, but he lived the truth of do not hold back the wages of the higher worker overnight. That is in Leviticus 19.13. And, not, and, and now, to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as a something due. Romans 4.4. 4. He lived that truth. And, and, and observe him. And that becomes the truth of my life even now. Right? So it's discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. More than discipline and teaching, fathers are to disciple their children. Discipleship starts at home. Children learn, grow, put into practice, you know, by being dutiful. That is my third point. James, the Apostle James, in chapter 1, verse 25, tells us this. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Look intently to the perfect law, to the perfect law of God in the Old and New Testament, repeatedly. What do you mean by look intently? That means consider, meditate, pay attention, be intentional. Okay? The law of God, the instruction to the Word of God and continue, persevere in it. Don't forget about it, says James. But also keep doing it. Right? Then you'll be blessed. Now, Jesus reminded us when he says such word in John 8, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Right? A perfect law that gives freedom. Jesus said, my word will set you free. Truth that sets you free. That is liberty as you follow the word instruction. And that is empowerment and enablement for us to do that. All right? Now, when we are hard to honour our parents, we will make time for them. Now, current lockdowns and restrictions make it difficult for many. Life is difficult, right? But we can certainly call them up. All right? Now, there are so many avenues for even video calls. What do you have? WhatsApp, lah, WeChat, Zoom, host of media, group calls as well. Now, put this social media, put this technology into good use to stay connected, 
to build and to strengthen the bond between you and your parents and your family. Now, coming to gifts, who will say no to gifts? Okay? A gifts will not be expensive. You know, it's your thoughtfulness that matters. You know, you will see on the slide before you, on the left, it's a handmade gift made by my daughter to me when she was about maybe 15, 16 years old. All right? She just example all the photos that she likes and she put it on and make it a card to wish me my birthday, during my birthday, that year. All right? On the top right-hand corner is the picture she loves most when I hug the tree because it tells us that, you know, I am a person who is huggable, all right? On the left, lower corner, the picture tells us, you know, this is the best that I, I enjoy most, hugging you, okay? Now, when you are bigger, when you are more able, on the right picture is the gift I just received from my son, okay? It's a, bag, it's a box of uh, uh, coffee beans sent all the way from Australia, okay? Now, my son knows I love coffee, I have a coffee machine at home. Okay? So this is a gift from him for my Father's Day. Okay? Now, through all this, uh, you know, the thoughtfulness of time you put in, you know, the words expressed as you put into paper, the gifts, the hugs, you know, these are all love being expressed. Okay? You can do that even now, even during this lockdown time. No, acts of service. You need to take care of parents, especially when they age. Help them with their chores, transport to cleaning places, including leisure. It is an intentional act of service we love. Little things really matter. Bigger things also are much appreciated. Give them your hugs every now and then. If you stay together, of course. You know, they will really treasure that. Okay? Now, for the adult children, it is your duty to honour yourselves. Live a life of honour. Okay? Honourable thought, honourable words, honourable deeds. What are the seeds that you are allowing to land in your mind and heart? When they land, they would sprout and grow into plants that would bear fruits. Okay? What fruits are growing on your trees? And honour your body, the temple of the living God. All right? Make sure, okay, you take care of your diet, your exercise, okay? Stay away from all these bad habits, all these bad addictions. You know what I mean, all right? And the Bible tells us also, not only our parents tell us, please be hardworking. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 6, 6, Take a lesson from the ends. You lazy bones, learn from their ways and become wise. Be wise. Don't be lazy. If you're lazy, you'll be poor. You know? But the hand of the diligent makes rich. Proverbs 10, 4. Okay? Now, we parents do really want to see their children be successful. All of us do, right? We, you want yourself to be successful too, isn't it? Now, they will be very proud when... You excel in your study, in your careers, in your relationships, you know, including your own families and your businesses, right? your ministries. But I believe, I share the hearts of many parents that you know, what they truly treasure and pray for is seeing you live a life of significance, of value, of honour, of abundance in your gardens with our God's design and purpose for you. Let me part you with these two final points for this morning. Now, honour is about the heart, as I said. All right? You must guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4, 23. You need to watch in all diligence because of your heart determines the course of your life. Okay? So children, guard your heart. Dads and moms, guard yours too. And those of your children. 
The Gospel of Luke 6.45 tells us, you know, out of the abundance of our heart comes what has been deposited within. Okay? It says here that this is the storehouse of your heart. What treasure are you putting in? Okay? If you lay up treasures of goodness, uprightness, and honourable things, then the product will be such. Okay? Be diligent in what you allow into your heart. What are you storing in the house of your heart? Are they good treasures? Let the word of God saturate it. Our Lord Jesus is the word of God becoming life. Let our Lord Jesus occupy more and more your heart. Okay? Let the spirit of God fuse and drives your heart. Let the goodness of God satisfy your heart. Nothing else but the love of Jesus. Nothing else but the grace of our Father and the companionship of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, our Heavenly Father, with His fatherly love and care for us, knows what we need in this world. He knows. He's our loving Father. He knows what we need. Okay? And that's why He says in Psalms 15, Sorry, 50, verse 15. Call upon me on the day of trouble. I will rescue you and you will honor me. You know, these are troubling times. All of us agree, right? There are troubles around. Troubles without and troubles within the families. Troubles in the community, in the nations. Okay? Children, parents, families are facing great challenges and hardships. Call upon Him, says the Lord. Pray, ask, seek, and knock. He will rescue, He will restore, He will release His counsel, His wisdom, His way, His solution, His favour, His resources, and His providence for all of us, for you children, for you parents. Now, pray for the truth and the abundance of grace to flow from the throne of God. Pray for the salvation of your loved ones. Okay? For those who are yet to have accepted the salvation grace of our Lord. Pray for their health, especially our older parents. And pray for those who are sick. Pray for finances, education. You know, there's so much academic stresses now in education for children, isn't it? Okay? There's so much uncertainty in jobs and livelihoods. There's so much emotional, mental stress. Stress within the family. Troubling times indeed. Okay. Some may have suffered pain, neglect, abandonment, and even abuse. Now pray for healing and restoration. Pray for mending of relationships. Pray for peace, mercy, joy, and love to come into your family. We all need this from the Lord, both parents and children. Pray against the enemy of our souls. We reject the lies, the deception, the division, the pain, the hurt, the sins, the curses that the enemy wishes to instill and perpetuate in our families. No, we say no to him. No, you have no place, you have no right, you have no role, you have no permission to do that, Satan, in our families. Pray for God to change us, children, parents, to be more like him. Let forgiveness come. Let brokenness be made whole again. Let reconciliation take over. Let God rule and the victory of our Lord Jesus reign in families such that the hearts of the parents will return to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents. Malachi 4, 6. Right? Let us pray as we close. Our Father, we are grateful for all your enduring love for us your children whom you call the apple of your eyes. Help us, Lord, to always understand the statutes and commands that you have inscribed, not just on tablets of stone, but on the tablet of our heart, and help us to obey thereby. We praise you, Lord Jesus, and thank you for the new covenant written with your blood, the victory on the cross, such that the hearts of the parents and children could turn back to each other. And the hearts of every household 
will turn to you, Lord. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. May the favour of our Lord Jesus be upon you, upon your family, your children, their children and their children and children. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lim, for bringing us the Word of God this morning. And I pray and I hope that this message has been an edifying message to you, that you'll be encouraged and be filled to face the, at least the next week in the presence of God. So as we close, I would just want to say thank you again for tuning in and joining in our worship service this morning. And so uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and fellowship of the Spirit be with all of you. Take care and God bless. And I'll see you this Wednesday, 8.20, sign in through Zoom at PMP. See you there.